Staying on the topic of labor, historically, labor organizations have spearheaded economic change in America through strikes, rallies, and marches. In fact, May Day itself, or what's better known today as International Workers' Day, has its roots in the labor movement of the 19th century, demanding better working conditions and pay conditions during the robber baron era right here in the United States. And today, as workers now face similar challenges, the labor movement is once again organizing and back in the streets. Richard Trumka, the president of the AFL-CIO, released a statement on today's action saying workers' rights should be universal and every person, no matter what nationality, ethnicity or gender, must have equal rights and the opportunity to achieve a better life. But now that the Occupy movement is carrying the banner for today's action, what is labor's role? Stuart Acuff joins me now. He's the chief, chief of staff with the Utility Workers Union of America, former director of organizing for the AFL-CIO, also author of several books, his most recent Plain Bigger Than You Are, A Life in Organizing. And sure. a friend of Tom Hartman. <laughs> and, 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 and proud of it. <laughs> Thank I, I am you. pleased to have you with us, Stuart. Thank uh, you. What role does labor play in this movement right now? Oh, a, a very uh, important role, um, a very critical role. Uh, in fact, uh, what we're seeing uh, from the um, right wing, the Koch brothers, uh, Karl Rove and Crossroads of America, is they're trying to kill us. This year, they have focused on the jugular, and they're trying to kill the labor Take movement. Labor. They're trying to kill the labor movement so that there is no effective counterpoint to uh, their power, corporate power. Um, this, this is and, why the anti-labor legislation in Wisconsin, Indiana. Exactly, Asia, exactly. Know. Well, if you look at the, the, the first states that they did that in, they're all swing states. They're uh, all swing states. So you take away 10, 20, 30 percent of the labor vote, Democrats can't win. Pro-workers uh, candidates can't win. And um, we are very proud uh, to be partners with the Occupy movement and very grateful to the Occupy movement. Uh, they changed the, uh, they, they have changed the conversation in America. They've changed the debate in America from one on debt uh, to, to, to one on our future. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're very important partners for us and, and uh, critical partners for us. Really? And we needed, frankly, Tom, we needed the kind of um, wake up call. Yeah. And well, in, and people in the street is a big piece of it. And uh, yeah. in the president today, in just, just moments ago in Afghanistan, uh, announced that he's pulling 23,000 troops out, an additional 23,000 troops out of, the, out of Afghanistan by right. the end of this summer and turning the, right. the country over to the Afghan government by 2014. Isn't this major reversal of Bush's policies by this president in part the result of millions of people in the street? Doesn't it Absolutely. show the power Absolutely. of movements when people get out there Absolutely. and how successful they can be, even if it takes a decade for that success yes, to happen? Yes, absolutely. But, but, you know, change in America has never come quickly. Yes. It's always uh, a, a, a difficult process. If you think about how long it took for African Americans to get their freedom, you know, for four centuries, you it's know, still how, it's a still a bit. and still uh, precarious. And and how long it took for women to be able to vote, and how look, long it took for workers to be able to organize. And now they're trying to take away, and in fact, in many cases, are taking away our right to organize. So um, yes, absolutely, uh, the key to change in America is not just action, but it it it, it it's also. Uh, staying with it. It's also uh, not giving up. It's also never letting go, never turning loose, never turning around. Yeah. Uh, you, you write in, in your book, in your most recent book, about how C. Khan, uh, his book about how people get power, right. inspired you when you were young. Right, uh, and, uh, right. When I was in college at University of Missouri. What did you learn from that that you then applied to your life and to your work well, and that you think that the that we all should know about. I, I, I came to uh, social change at, from the Judeo-Christian background. My father was a Southern Baptist minister, uh, and I read the scriptures every night for year, year after year after year after year. Um, what I got from Sycon's book and what I got from a few other people was it's so much more effective when you do it together. And really, that's how we're made to work, is together. You know, not as individuals, but and the thing that that 
I love about the labor movement and organizing and Occupy and all these other movements is it's about linking arms and lifting everybody up together. Everybody's yeah. kids, everybody's family, everybody's future together. Not pushing anybody aside, not crawling over anybody's back, not ratting anybody out, but doing it together uh, as, as, as a people. And, uh, and uh, I, I, that's what I got. Uh, that, that's the key lesson from organizing, whether it's Sycon's book or whether it's my book, is uh, we are a social species and we're, um, and, and we're most noble when we're working together for everybody's welfare. Very, very well said. We're wired for this. Yes, um, you're right, Tom. We are wired for this. Yeah, it's, I think it's in our DNA. It, more than 80 nations around the world are celebrating today as International Workers' Day. Right not the United States. Right. Although it all started with the Haymarket Square stuff That's in right. 1886 when, when the police right. killed four people and, and then the next day the, you know, this bomb got thrown. Right. In the minute we have left, I'm curious your thoughts on why we don't celebrate International Workers' Day in the United States. Well, I think States. in some ways it's been co-opted. It's been co-opted by Labor Day in, uh, at the end of the summer uh, where there's still a lot of activity. I, I would like for your viewers to remember that uh, May Day started with the fight for the eight-hour day mm. and the right to form a union. Those two issues, right. the eight-hour day and the right in, to form a union. In 1886. Yes, in 1886. Give us time for leisure. Give us time for our families. Give us time to be human beings. Yeah. That's what May Day's about. Yeah. Give us time to be human beings. Very, very well said. Stuart, thanks so much. Always Thank great you, to Tom. see you. Always great to see Thank you. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it very much.